What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to the new moon in Aquarius workshop. This feels like a full moon to me because there's a lot of um, strong energies influencing us right now. Um, why? Because there's a lot of um, planets that were retrograde, but now they're either um, stationing direct or they're moving direct again, um, or soon they will be moving direct. <laughs> but it just feels like all of this action and everything happening in Capricorn um, is really focusing on our like deep foundations, emotionally, financially, physically, like everything right now just feels a little bit more serious than it needs to. It doesn't need to be so serious. So make sure you're trying to have some fun. Um, but overall, new moon energy is exciting because it's a new cycle, it's a new chapter, it's a new start, it's a fresh movement. Um, and Aquarius energy is fun also. It's unique, it's innovative, it's creative, it's expression. Um, it's really focused on love and connecting with society and community and making sure that we're all expanding and growing together, which is really um, nice. But yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of strong um, planetary influences right now. So I will explain that. Um, if this is your first time, this will be under 30 minutes. We're going to talk about um, the astrology. We're going to focus on some tarot. I was shuffling and four cards popped out and they're perfect, <laughs> um, especially because Pluto in Capricorn right now is really asking us um, to focus on that rebirth and that establishing new structures, foundations, etc. This card represents Pluto. So it's really um, on point for the theme. Um, we also have a lot of what looks like not accepting the same bullshit, um, not wanting the same things we've always wanted. Now sort of getting rid of the old values, getting rid of them, the old structures, the old people, the old projects. Um, and we're making more available space for the spring equinox. That is Aries season. That is when the actual energetic new year will start. So we have a new cycle, a fresh year starting in uh, March, I believe. March 22nd, around that time um, is Aries season. And that will be the start of the new energetic year. So for a lot of people who are like, why do I feel like I'm still stuck or frustrated or things are not happening fast? It's because we're technically still in the 2021 energy because yes, like January is the new year, but also energetically speaking, it's not. We're still um, in last year's energy and we're wrapping things up. We're in the last two chapters, Aquarius and then Pisces, and then we wrap it up and we close it and we start fresh in Aries season. So we're very close, uh, we're getting near, the start of the next year, that energy. But right now it can feel a little bit frustrated because we also have, well, I'll get into the astrology. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm always going to condense it and explain it. So it makes more um, sense for some of you. If you're like, what the fuck is like conjunction? What does that mean? It means together and those planets together will affect you like this. So I will explain that. Um, yeah, let's just jump in, I guess. If you have your 2022 astro calendar, um, you can open up your pages with the notes, which is like this. And you can write down all, you can put down everything we talk about now or um, transfer your information later, whatever. But these have a lot of good points and um, yeah, anyways, you can just read about that on my website. But if you have yours here, I suggest opening up and writing down with me. Um, okay, 10 of wands, 10 of wands reverse. So this energy to me looks like we can't continue thinking the same things, doing the same things. Um, Mars in Capricorn right now is asking us to slow down and really think about how we want to proceed how we want to do something. Mercury, Mercury is still retrograde, also in Capricorn. Um, so we're really um, revisiting, reflecting, 
reimagining how we want to process all of our information, how we want to process our behavior. Um, we're creating new processes. We're thinking about how to do things differently. And everything we're trying to set up now is for the long term. These are long term changes. This is not quick. This is not something that will happen overnight and it's done. No, this is something that we need to commit to because Capricorn energy is asking us to commit to new cycles, commit to new foundations, establishments, et cetera. Um, overall, Aquarius energy is connected to fixed, fixed air, okay? So that can be um, perspectives that we're stuck with, um, old ideas that we're still holding on to. Mercury retrograding right now is really asking us to evaluate all of those old perspectives, evaluate all of those old belief systems, all of those old um, fixed thoughts, fixed ideas, things that up until now, we always thought we were. That was just my identity. That's me. It's like, no, you can change that. Um, also, how you see your friendships, family, relationships, how you make money, how you value your time, your body, your resources. That is all coming up now as well. Why? Because Venus was also retrograde. She just finished. So now she's stationing direct and will be moving direct, I believe, also in Capricorn. So all of our long-term value systems, everything that we valued up until now is now changing. Um, we really don't need to rush this process. You also have like another two months um, where we'll be wrapping things up, understanding new perspectives, allowing flow to happen and to move forward. And then when we move into Aries season, the start of the new energetic year, it will be go time. Also, most planets that have been retrograde up until now will be moving direct. And I think all planets will be direct very, very soon. Like I wanna say in the next like week or two, um, I can look that up. I'll post something on my Instagram, but like most planets will be direct again very, very soon, which means things are ready to go and we can start actually making more changes and seeing more results and starting to expand in that new um, available space. And then when Aries season starts, it'll be like, boom, and we're like off. We're like, go, go, go. You know what I mean? So slow down, allow the process to just naturally unfold. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about, what am I missing? Um, so this new moon is conjunct Saturn. So conjunct means together. So the new moon wants to start something, a new cycle, but Saturn wants to slow things down. Saturn wants limitations, rules, boundaries, slow and steady wins the race. That's the kind of vibe with Saturn. So a lot of us are trying to go, 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 or we want something new, or we feel like we've already changed in all these ways, but externally our world hasn't caught up. We're feeling like, ugh, or we feel like, okay, I'm excited about these things and I'm feeling good about these things. And this is like really positive, but there's still these old addictions or dependencies or belief systems, or I can't really get off um, or shake these old ideas about something. Don't stress, Mercury is still retrograde. So a lot of old themes, a lot of old people, a lot of old fears, um, from the past coming back around. We've got Mercury retrograde in Capricorn and Pluto is in Capricorn. So, sorry, I ate a bagel. I'm like, got fucking seeds in my teeth. <laughs> so Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn together. What does that mean? Well, Mercury is our thoughts, our ideas, our perspective, our mental process, how we apply our ideas to make something happen, the actual process of doing something. 
and when it's connected to Capricorn, we're trying to figure out what is a better approach for the future, for our healthier relationships, for our healthier work, life, work, rest, balance, for our future self. We want a better version of ourself for the future. How do we do that? Well, we figure it out right now. We're evaluating what we don't want and we're eliminating those things and we're trying to establish more of what we really want. We're inviting that in. New moon in Aquarius, thinking about our future self, thinking about how to reinvent ourselves. Now, there's a lot of deep emotional blocks, maybe blocks to abundance, blocks to love, blocks to um, peace. And now we're able to investigate and identify and pull those up. Why? Because Pluto. Pluto is very deep. It's subconscious. It's old fears and ideas that we've inherited um, or traumas that we've held on to. And now we have an opportunity to bring them up and to release them. Why? So we can establish a better foundation for the next cycle of relationships and work, et cetera. So a lot of old triggers could be coming up right now. A lot of old fears, anxieties, confusion. Mars in Capricorn and Venus in Capricorn is asking us to slow down and to evaluate our desires and to evaluate how we take action, how we, we feel something and we want to impulsively do something. Not the time for that, bitch. Slow down. Think about it. Think about how you impulsively acting will impede something you value. Maybe you value a relationship and if you just jump into acting because you're triggered <clears throat> wow <sighs> throat chakra speak your truth <laughs> if you are feeling triggered and you want to um grab the phone and check the phone it's just like whew, no that is not going to support um your relationship that is not going to support your mental health you don't need to do that if you value this connection try to figure out a way to speak and to communicate more clearly about what you need etc it's like this is not a time for us to be rushing and jumping and making stupid decisions and just going for it okay um we're really focusing on building so how can you build healthier more trustworthy relationships to yourself also how can you control your impulses how can you learn to trust yourself more that is also really important right now okay um, the last thing I want to talk about is Mars square Chiron in Aries. So what does that mean? Well, Chiron is the uh, wounded healer. So there's a lot of old wounds or um, pain or frustrations or anger coming up. And we are maybe wanting to impulsively act or do something that is familiar. It's how we've always done something. Well, Mars being square to that is asking us to figure out how to heal that old kind of behavior and to figure out how to establish a new ego, establish a new identity, and how to act more appropriately um, for, how do I say that? For like trying to figure out a new way of using all of that energy, because Mars energy is strong and it is like it wants war, it wants to fight, it wants to protect, it wants to take control. And it's just like, we can't do that. We can't control the people around us. We can't impulsively freak out and attack people and hope that they like, oh, just accept that bullshit. It's like, no. And vice versa, we're not accepting that kind of energy from other people now either. So Mars in Capricorn is asking us to figure out a new way of doing things. This new moon in Aquarius is strongly influenced from that kind of energy as you are being asked to reinvent yourself and to establish a new identity and a new um, way of thinking, a new way of doing. So that's the overall energy right now, okay? A lot of deep release, a lot of deep excavation and purging. And um, we can't fix this energy. Sorry, not this year. That's the wrong sign. We can't fix this internal stressful triggered energy if we act like 
an Aries, a low vibrational Aries energy. So for example, not thinking before you jump, not thinking before you speak, just diving in. And I'm not saying that all Aries act like that. That's a low vibrational Aries experience. It's just like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to go for it. I'm impulsive. I'm just doing my thing and like fuck everyone else. And I don't care. Like that doesn't work now. And if you try to act like that, you're going to fuck things up and you're going to notice in a few weeks, uh, why the fuck did I do that? I wasted a good opportunity or whatever. So instead we're being asked to focus more on a high vibrational Capricorn experience, which is slow and steady, which is intentional, which is thoughtful and processing, you know, step by step by step. Um, okay. The other two cards we have here are the High Priestess Reverse and the Queen of Cups Reverse. We also have the Four of Cups Reverse and Temperance with the Eight of Coins, Ten of Swords Reverse. So internal work. We need to be doing the internal work. We need to figure out how to use this energy in new ways. So maybe breath work, maybe just writing, um, getting creative. Um, it could be just focusing all of that energy. <sighs> on trying to clean or trying to set up a new business or whatever. Um, don't let these old thoughts and old invitations, don't let these old ideas and old invitations, um, it's like inviting you to old behaviors that are toxic behaviors or toxic cycles or people or experiences. Don't go back into that, okay? The 10 of wands reverse is saying, drop it. You also don't need to carry all of that energy and burden for the rest of your life. It's like, excuse it, forgive yourself, drop it, think about new ways, okay? This death process, this death process is, it's taking its time, but soon with all of the planets moving direct again, you will notice the energy shifts and you're ready to start really um, acting in a new way. Trust yourself, trust yourself. I feel like a lot of people right now have so much internal mental stimulation and dialogue and they're confused about what to do it's like we're we're disconnecting from the trust from the higher knowledge so make sure that we're still um allowing that energy to be you know in in charge it's better than your your logic trauma thinking to hijack the experience it's like you don't want that you want to connect more with meditation with um, taking baths with getting out in nature, connecting with water, et cetera, and making sure that you're taking time to rest so that you can actually download the energy and the new information and messages coming through because there's a lot of like chaotic energy flying around. And if we don't focus with our higher self and our soul guides and our support from the universe, then if we don't do that, we're going to be like taken on a ride and it's going to be like, it's going to be a challenge. So today we are going to focus on establishing those new structures and inviting in that new energy. Okay. Um, my doorbell just rang. So I'm just going to pause this for one second. Okay. I'm going to pull one Oracle card also see what it says. And then we're going to start with the energy clearing and the meditation, which should be done in like 10 minutes. Okay. Sacrifice. This is saying sacrifice. Sacrifice. So, what do we need to sacrifice? What do we need to let go of? What do we need to clear and to release finally and say, okay, I'm willing to sacrifice these old ideas, these old connections, or these old triggers, traumas. And, and of course, like, like traumas will, you know, stay with us forever to some degree. We will always have already experienced that. So it'll always be integrated into our experience moving forward. But we can sacrifice our impulsive reaction to when we're triggered and that trauma comes up again and we're feeling like, ah, oh, it's like, oh, I just want to take control. It's like, so what needs to be sacrificed so you can invite in more peace, abundance, opportunity for real honest connection and um, trust, et cetera, you know? Um, and it's the number 11. 
And Aquarius in modern day astrology is connected to the 11th house. Love it. Okay, we're going to start the energy clearing now. Um, you can make yourself more comfortable. You can lay down or you can sit, whatever. Um, I always, I always um, like to just recognize that most of the people taking this workshop are settlers on their land. So it's important for us to um, understand that we have a responsibility and a role in reconciliation with the indigenous people that were here before us. Um, also, we're not using sage. Um, we have access to other smoke bundles. We will be selling different ones on my website soon. Um, so you can read more about that and who makes them and everything. Um, also, if you are uploading videos or hosting an event, please hire an interpreter or add captions because deaf people want access too, okay? Um, so I'm going to start now um, with the energy clearing and then the meditation is going to start right after. So the first thing I want you to do is just visualize a green fire burning in front of you on the ground and you're going to have a golden comb in your hand and you're just going to comb down um, your aura. So your aura is an energetic egg-shaped field around your body and it picks up a lot of debris. So I just want you to intuitively comb out any place you feel like you have some stuck energy and then you can toss it into that green fire that is burning in front of you, okay? I'm going to use distance energy Reiki symbols now and some um, sound bowl. Um, so just relax and visualize combing out your aura. You can now change the visualization into just white light pouring down like rain or just like sunlight coming down onto you. And we are going to recharge your energy field with high vibrational positive energy. And we're going to invite in more protection. And then the meditation is going to start immediately after. start this meditation by taking three deep breaths. So I want you to inhale, two, three, four, and hold. And release, two, three, four. We're gonna do one more, just really relaxing the jaw and filling the belly. So inhale, two, three, four, and hold and release two three four one last time the 
biggest breath you can take. Inhale, two, three, four, and hold. And releasing it all. Release, two, three, four. Aquarius energy represents higher knowledge, access to the divine, thinking outside the box, seeing ourselves in new ways. And in the tarot, it's represented by the star card. So I wanna work with the imagery of a clear sky filled with stars. So I want you to place yourself standing outside, maybe in a meadow or a forest or the backyard. And I want you to look up and to see a clear night full of stars in the sky. Now I want you to reach up and I want you to grab one star, bring it down and hold it in your hand and I want you to look at it. And if you can, you can go into the star, you can visualize what is inside of the star and I want you to see the relationships in your future. This can be friends, family, love, romance. How do these relationships feel? Is there trust, balance, support? Are you moving in the same direction? Are you sharing the same vision? Are you able to communicate freely? Your ideas, your dreams, your pain, I want you to feel held and supported in these relationships. Maybe you're visualizing specific people. Maybe it's just an energy and a vibration, but I want you to feel how it feels. I want you to hold that vibration. And I want you to place that energy in the star. Now I want you to look at the star holding it in your hand, and I want you to press it into your body as we absorb this energy. Now I want you to look up into the sky, I want you to grab another star and pull it down, and I want you to hold it in your hand, and this time I want you to think about work, career, projects that invite more expansion, maybe more resources, money what does financial independence look like to you what are you doing if you're doing what you love what does that look like who are you with what type of abundance does this invite and how do you share how do you support others with what you've got who are you working with that's supporting you? And how are you enjoying it? How are you loving what you do? Now I want you to feel that energy of opportunity coming towards you. I want you to feel that alignment with abundance, with money, with community, with expansion. And I want you to hold that vibration. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel financial independence. I want you to feel abundant and rich in resources, in free time, in opportunity. And as we hold that energy, I want you to place it all in that star. And I want you to see yourself holding that star as it fills with this vibration. And I want you to press it into your body and absorb it. Now I want you to look up and grab one last star, bring it down, I want you to look at it, maybe go inside of it, and I want you to see yourself as healthy as possible. What are you doing to maintain a level of balance? What are you doing to rest? What are you doing to ground your body and support your body? 
in healthy ways. Routines, exercise, spiritual practice. Are you fighting things and forcing things or are you just allowing life to bring you through its natural flow? What are you doing to maintain a sense of well-being? Are you stretching? Are you cooking? What are you eating? How are you behaving? And who are you with? Do you have time for travel, for play, for joy? Is there a coach or someone who supports you? I want you to feel this energy of well-being, feel this energy of true balance. I want you to put that energy into the star as you observe it, as you hold that vibration. And I want you to invite that into your experience. I want you to press that star into your body and absorb it. Now the last thing I want you to do is to look up at the stars and I want you to make one last wish, whatever comes to mind. I want you to give yourself permission to receive. And I want you to send gratitude for the journey, for the opportunity to connect with yourself, with your guides, with the universe, and give thanks for everything that's on its way towards you. We're going to take one last inhale, two, three, four, and hold, and release, two, three, four. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and welcome back. Okay. So now um, we're going to play the pause game. You're going to hit pause on my face, and then you're going to write a list of everything you want to invite under this new moon in Aquarius. So you can hit pause now. And if you missed it, you can't go back. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. That's it. Um, so thank you again for everyone. Um, for joining. Thank you for your donations. This is pay what you can. This is my job. So I really appreciate all of the money that comes in to support this kind of work. Um, if you are interested in buying the um, Aquarius season workshop and workbook, it is 50% off now. We also have the Venus retrograde workshop and workbook 50% uh, off because her retrograde is done, but she still has like two and a half weeks of um, retrograde post shadow influence. So we'll still be feeling it. Um, and also if you want to download the tarot 2022 year ahead forecast, you can see that all the links are below the calendar, everything. Okay. We have so many amazing resources. I hope you grab it. Um, and thank you for everyone who's already using them. I love you. I will see you very soon and happy new moon. Bitch.